I already recorded a short video about this book. This is a more relaxed and extended discussion of Meredith Broussard's book, More Than a Glitch. As you might expect, the book is about tech. It is about various fields within technology, including AI, design of user interface, surveillance technologies, and predictive coding in general. It looks at those fields and examines how and why they are biased with respect to race, gender, and ability. It is not that those the technologies themselves produce bias or they are the generators of bias. It is more accurate to say that because they are situated within a world in which those problems, those problems exist, some of those problems are then reflected and implemented unintentionally and amplified because technology itself makes our actions more powerful and more efficient. Some of the problems that exist within our world, in our ecology environment, in our culture, they are amplified with technology without us necessarily knowing. There are several subtopics. There's a chapter on face recognition software. She has a chapter on predictive policing, the harm that police force might do pursuing machine learning predictions, acting based on machine learning predictions and taking those predictions at face value. There's a chapter on education and predictive grading. And predictive grading means grading without looking at the student's work, interestingly. Um, she has a chapter on medical diagnosis, which includes her own firsthand experience with cancer and the relevant medical technology that get, gets mixed in in the relationship between health workers and patients. There's really a pseudo-religious aspect, it seems, to how some people relate to technology, some advocates of the new tech. A faith in the character of tech as almost otherworldly. Bruce Hart uses the term techno-chauvinism to refer to this attitude. It's an attitude that blocks, of course, it blocks critical thinking and progress towards justice and a fairer society, fair use of technology. What I like about this book, what I like is that it, it includes rich and colorful examples, which makes the arguments more memorable, the presentation more memorable and multidimensional. The individuals Broussard writes about here in the book, for example, Richard Dehan and his experience at Apple and Robert McDaniel and his experience getting misrecognized and arrested are very memorable. They stay with you. Now, there's a tricky part. And the tricky part has to do with the, the nature of the topic itself. When you're writing about social justice in relation to any field, including tech. There's always the possibility of becoming excessively partisan. There's nothing wrong with a writer becoming partisan, becoming very passionate about a position on an issue, but it might have certain rhetorical disadvantages. If you're writing for people who don't necessarily understand the issue, if your readers include people who might not agree with you initially, you might push them away. Especially if you come across as a kind of lawyer figure who is making a case only on one side of an issue and necessarily pushing against the other side at all cost, trying to prove that the other side is wrong. You know, I'm listening to myself as I'm editing the video and I don't think the problem is rhetorical primarily. I think the problem is really epistemological. It would have been nice to drill down and get to the heart of what techno-chauvinism is. What is it? Is there a redeemable core in it? Is there something, you know, if you peel off all the negative, all the attachments, personal attachments that people have, is there a small core that is good? You know, if we get a glimpse of the good side of techno-chauvinism, it would have made the whole argument, the whole book, so much more engaging, so much more interesting. It would have made it more dramatic because now we have really genuinely two sides. Right now, we don't really have two sides. We have a dark void. It's like mistake side, the mistake side, the, the side of ignorance. And we have the good side. And the good side has to just march on. So that's, I think, that's a problem. It's not just rhetorical. It is also about really getting to the bottom of it and not leaving some stuff, relevant stuff behind. I think the most effective way, and this is of course incredibly difficult, but the most effective way to present this type of argument is to frame it as something that is good for all of us, something that is about all of us, and a set of problems that we all need to solve because it has consequences for all of us. And if they are left unsolved, all of us will be worse off. Has she done this in the book? 
I'm not sure. She has done it best, I think, in chapter six, where she is writing about ability. She says, when you consider blind or deaf people in the design of an interface, you are extending the domain of communication. And that's a great way of describing it. It's a great metaphor, extending something that is already that already exists, extending it and making it more inclusive. Everyone benefits from an inclusive design, not just those people who were the original motivation for the modified design. In general, of course, it is hard to be calm and distant and objective when you're writing about mistreatments of specific groups or individuals. But um, I'm thinking whether that's something that Broussard and others writing along the same lines should consider. I don't know. This is itself a, a topic for debate. The book itself is worthwhile if you're interested in reading about the social, political consequences of technology. You should read this type of book. If not exactly this book, you should read a few books like this. And that's it. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're reading and check out my book club. The link is below. We are at the moment deciding what to read in the next three months of this year, 2023. Please like and subscribe if you like the video. And I will speak with you in the near future.